Okay. There's something I've always called lens milk because that's exactly what it looks like. I call it lens milk. Here's a perfect example. Shot with that absolutely horrid Chinese plastic to chew toy that's overpriced. The 105mm f1.4. Under uh, ideal conditions, it's a lot more visible than in other conditions. If you actually take a look at this picture, you'll notice if you kind of like unfocus your eyes, you don't look at anything in particular. You'll notice that there is a haze that falls over the entire picture. Now, like it looks like lens flare, except lens flare, which of course is washing out uh, the light with flare coming in from the, trying, the image you're trying to take, only like washes over a small part or a large part of your picture, but not evenly over the whole picture. So this looks like really, really light lens flare, except it is always perfectly even across the entire picture. This uh, thing that I've actually always called lens milk is actually really poor bandwidth, bad color saturation. The problem with this is, it's like, well, I can hit the saturation slider on Lightroom and I can drag it over. Yeah, you can, girlfriend, but guess what? <laughs> Anytime a, a lens is milky like this, and I, that's what I've called it, lens milk. I'm starting to have visions of someone squeezing cow tits and getting milk, right? <laughs> You've got bad micro contrast. You see, micro contrast are intertonal values, and there ain't no software program that can add detail that was not there to begin with. Okay? What that means is that all those lens elements are choking off the low micro voltage illumination which translates into the perceived depth of the picture which adds to the perceived depth from that intertonal detail and what it looks like and is really apparent when I show it to people in a black and white as I did yesterday a lot of people really like that and then I uh, had requests to uh, post up the original images which I did here are the original uh, color images right here totally untouched straight out of camera uh, and all I did was just do a high resolution conversion. That's a uh, resurrection plant, by the way. You can see the one on the right. Now it looks brighter, but it's not. The histograms and the color on both are the same, basically the same. This one on the right is not brighter. The difference is there's no intertonal detail. There's very low intertonal detail on the one on the right. Lens milk. Now, the images are both equally sharp. The one on the left is from the 105 F2DC core. The one on the right is from the uh, 104 F14E. One on the left has six elements. One on the right has 14 elements. <clears throat> way light is, is that light does not like to be poked like a, a little brat that has a stick. You know, it's like poking a little uh, a rat in a cage. You ever seen a little brat with a, like a, a hamster or something, and he's like poking the poor hamster in the cage? Light doesn't like, is exactly like that rat, you know, it'll turn rabid and it'll bite you. And the same thing happens when it passes through too many elements. Now, obviously, you can't go strictly on element count. However, the two are almost synonymous. Um, there are some elements, uh, lenses, that actually have uh, at 10 and 11 elements, which have really good, not excellent, but really good micro contrast. Depends on how the lens is designed, also the focal length. Um, they're both sharp. However, that intertonal detail cannot be added in Lightroom. It can't be added in Photoshop. It cannot be. There's no slider to add detailed information that wasn't there to begin with. The one on the left is perceptually deeper. People say, well, it's a two-dimensional image. What do you mean it's deeper? The human brain doesn't work that way, okay? I said perceived depth, which adds to the beauty of the shot. Um, you know, you can add the saturation like on the milky shot of the cat, I can just, you know, drop over the saturation sliders and that's no big deal. And where's the kitty cat? And that's what me and like hundreds of other people I like called an emergency meeting of uh, one of the Nikon ambassadors. And by the way, if you're a Nikon ambassador, you are de facto working for Nikon. This guy did a switcheroo on his images. We all called him out. There were hundreds, hundreds of us that called this guy out saying, you just swapped the image. You, you radically, radically edited this. And saturation was way better. It looked like a better image, except it was not out of camera. Not. I'm not talking about he cropped it a little bit and he tweaked. No, I mean, the image was radically different. 
he got caught. And then he erased all the comments and they re-uploaded the image and then people kept commenting and then I don't know if he had like a discussion with somebody at Nikon. Nikon's probably like, you know, just solve it and like put up both images of both pictures. He actually did them to all. But since he got called out the most on uh, two images, one image of an old guy and one image of a baby, he just finally said, you know, this is how I interpreted the image. His edits looked really good. And, but what it would have done to the, the novice mind is that it would have uh, seen that as, well, this is what the lens does. That's not what the lens does. That's what dude did in Photoshop. You know, you don't buy a lens based upon what you can do to it and molest it in Photoshop and Lightroom. So that was disingenuous. He backpedaled after hundreds of people. You know, I literally had hundreds of people, like, watching exactly what this person was doing. Like every, and they were refreshing, so we caught. Uh, you know, I don't care. It's like, well, you're a Nikon ambassador. No, you're, Nikon does not have that many ambassadors. When you're a Nikon ambassador, you are working for Nikon. That doesn't mean your main pay has to be coming from Nikon, but it means you are working for Nikon. You are their puppet and representative, which is fine, but you don't misrepresent a lens, especially a really expensive lens like that. And then this lens is bad and milky. But, you know, there are many lenses out there. This is very indicative of Sigma lenses, some Tamron lenses. And, uh, unfortunately, and Nikon should be ashamed of their damn ass. Let me repeat that. Nikon should be ashamed of themselves. Many of the modern recent releases. Now, the 24-1G, I'll talk about this in the next video, is excellent. That's a modern Nikon lens. just the, the tits. The 20mm 1.8G, awesome. Great lens. But those are ultra-wides. This should not be going on in these sort of uh, fixed prime lenses at 35 millimeters and above. Should not be going on. So that's what I'm calling lens milk. Um, said you can't add to the intertonal uh, later. This looks like very, very light, but very even uh, lens flare. And if you look at this image, I'll give you the link below. If you look at it, you'll as soon as you recognize it once, you will forever see it in any other shot from any other lens. When you see um, uh, lens milk, you can call it whatever you want. I don't care. It is just bad bandwidth. What it is is it's the uh, the lens elements, 14 of them, or 12, or 10, or 20, 24, beating up on the light. And what happens is is that you uh, have uh, poor color saturation. Let me show you something else really important. Okay, I uploaded another shot. And all of these are straight out of camera. Totally uncropped, totally unedited. Just straight out of damn camera. Didn't touch it. I, now I did add some text to this one, so I guess that's editing, but I didn't change the picture. Now you see how purple this cat's white fur is? That's magenta. RGB, CMY, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. Mm -hmm. The way things work is light. <sighs> You're so lucky. It sound egotistical to have somebody that A is not selling anything, B is an expert in light and field theory, and is absolutely a quintessential, quintessential expert on lenses. What happens is light does not like to be beat up as it passes through a lens as it's hitting the sensor in the back of your camera. Now, <clears throat> now you know how light uh, gets spread out through a prism. You know, the blue's over here, the red's over here. Blue light's high energy light, green basically the same, it's right next to blue. The reason this picture looks so magenta, and this really shows up on this lens when there's no direct illumination, it's very, very overcast when this shot was taken. No, I think this was actually after the sun had set. There's still plenty of light, but it's there's no direct light. The reason this cat fur is so magenta is that it's not that it's so much magenta, it's lacking the green. The green's a high energy light. Now, the way a lens works, if it's got too many elements in it and or it's poorly designed like this overpriced Chinese piece of plastic garbage, very overpriced, it's like setting out a, a piece, a, a pool of tar. Blue light, green light, it's going really fast. It's actually more, uh, more uh, energetic. It actually carries more energy. Glass is a capacitor. I don't care if you believe me on this. It's a hardcore damn fact. Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, heavy side. People think glass is a resistor. No, glass is a capacitor. If you don't believe me, check out Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Type in on YouTube, um, MIT, the dissectable capacitor. Glass is a capacitor. 
Nothing is a perfect insulator, nothing is a perfect uh, capacitor, but glass is a capacitor. It is both insulator and capacitor. In most people's mind, they don't understand how electricity works. To them, they think that's a contradiction. It's not. Anyway, what happens is uh, blue light and green light, after, after it passes through too many elements, it slows down. Red light isn't affected as much because it's not that energetic. So when you have a slow runner running through tar, they're not affected as much once they hit the sensor. This is an analogy, of course. Blue light, green light, really fast runners, when they hit the tar, the percentage of which they were slowed down or diminished, actually what happens is a certain percentage of it is diminished, meaning not as much reaches the uh, actual image sensor, is that if you subtract too much green from an image, you end up with a lot of magenta. RGB, C, and Y, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. Red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. So by subtracting all that green for through uh, uh, high energy capacitance uh, from the 14 elements in the 105F14, you end up with a magenta or purple looking kitty cat. And this is lens milk, which translates into bad micro contrast, which translates into a really, really horrible lens for black and white photography, especially. Now, someone can say, well, I can take this image and I can stick it in Lightroom and I can color balance that out. I can make that kitty cat white again. And my answer to that person who is an idiot, I will go, yes, you are right, but what you're forgetting is that if an image, if a lens has bad micro contrast, that means it is horrible in black and white. You can color balance it all you want, but if you're a black and white shooter, for example, that inner tonal detail is absent. It can't be added in Photoshop or Lightroom, and that I've proven what that does to the images. I mean, I flat out proven it. It's undeniable. It's irrefutable. You can see it right there, and you can see it right uh, uh, there. And so, there you go. There's a big lesson on something that you've never heard before from any other photography magazine, because A, most people aren't experts on lenses. B, they're definitely not experts on light and field theory. And see, they just don't really have that much experience with a wide variety of lenses and what it means. You know, <clears throat> there is absolutely no difference, and here's something else that you're going to have to think about. There's no difference between a radio and your um, a damn camera, a digital camera. That lens is an antenna, girlfriend. It is an antenna. Electromagnetic radiation is electromagnetic radiation is electromagnetic radiation. It doesn't matter if it's visible or it's radio. That lens is an antenna. Now, there are good antennas and bad antennas. Okay? That camera body is the radio. This is a perfect, almost 100% perfect analogy for what your camera and lens are. I'm also a ham radio operator. I am uniquely situated to understand A, what a good lens is, B, how a good or bad lens affects light, see how that affects you as a photographer. If you're a black and white shooter, micro contrast is insanely important. Yes, that lens is an antenna. Every lens is unique and it's its own design by X designer designers and uh, how it operates as an antenna covers the spectrum from RGB CMY, covers the uh, visible electromagnetic light that passes through it, affects the ultimate image output and its rendering. Thanks for watching. Bye.